You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for June 1st, 2018. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we have triumphed over evil like nobody has seen before. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Nobody has seen before. Is that from some Marvel movie or something? That is uh, one of the many, many absolutely ludicrous batshit things that uh, the president of the United States told a crowd of racist uh, uh, mouth breathers in Nashville this week. Oh, um, you mean because... Donald Trump said we have triumphed over evil like nobody has seen before? Yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> and, and, and many other things. Many, many other things. Oh, my things. God. Uh, he is apparently the only politician that produced more than he said he was going to produce. And we're only a year and a half in. More what? <laughs> yeah, in, into hell, you know. And as, as Churchill said, when you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah, right. Um, right. We all kept hearing, he can't get to 270. Remember, remember, you need 270, electoral college. Oh, my gosh. And then, of course, there they are right back there. Fake, they're fake. Look at how many of them. Oh, boy, that's a lot of people back there. That's a lot of people. Fake news. Oh, yeah. I heard he goaded yeah. the media, the the press that was present and that some people got rather violent with members of the press there. Yeah, I heard that. MS-13 lover Nancy Pelosi. She loves MS-13. <laughs> Crooked Hillary. <laughs> well, that reminds me of a, a question that one of our listeners, Stephen, sent me. Yeah. Which well, is you, you, you ask questions. I'm going to respond with a random quote from Donald Trump. How's that? OK. Mm -hmm. What is conservatism if they can't mention Hillary Rodham Clinton? Our laws are the worst laws of any country anywhere in the world. <laughs> our laws? Yes, our laws are the worst laws of any country anywhere in the world, says the president of the fucking United States. He's disqualified from being president. Yeah, we know that by now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's let's uh, remind people of our wonderful fake sponsors. Sure. The Second Dukakis Amendment. Khakis. The Second Amendment. <laughs> if Democrats take over, you won't have a Second Amendment. He's playing the greatest hits, is what he's doing. He is because he does. And and I do I do recall that uh, even Joe Scarborough, yes. you know who who needs to be dragged through hell backwards toward his own history with Donald Trump and yeah. the monthly call in interviews and yeah. helping Donald Trump write his speech to Congress and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did I did like his comment that. You know, the season two, it's season two of the reality right. TV president. It and it's just it's just the same scripts rehashed from season one. And it's getting boring. But you know who thinks season two is great? Who? Democrats running for office. Many of them are saying great things about me. Great things. <laughs> and Republicans in secret are saying, oh, my God, oh my God. Oh can my I retire God. now? They're lining up to use that one oh. noose in the men's room in the Senate bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, but, you know, we except for things. except for Blake Farenthold, the the duck pajama guy who yeah. still owes the U.S. taxpayer, or I guess he used eighty four thousand dollars of congressional funds to pay off his people that he sexually harassed, and now he's his lawyer told him not to pay it back, so he's not going to. But he's got a job lobbying Congress now. So oh, that's I'd, good. I'd like to welcome our newest fake sponsor. Who's our newest fake sponsor? Mexico. Mexico. Because <laughs> in the end, in the end, Mexico is going to pay for the podcast. I'm telling you that. I'm telling right. you. Mexico, right. And this is, this is, I'm just reading now. I know. But you know what? People don't tune into this podcast to hear Donald Trump. No, they don't. They really, no. really they don't. They want to hear Roseanne, though, apparently. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> it, I, I, was I, I, it was Amian. It's, it's <laughs> It was a joke, and some people it's call not my me fault. I'm the victim here. Some people call me a housewife. I prefer the term domestic terrorist. <laughs> all right, we'll get into all of that. Well, you know what? Uh, Dukakis khakis is a yes. Dukakis. Uh, Michael Dukakis's line of sensible men's pants. Yes, sensible pants for senseless times. Dukakis khakis. They're not so good for running in. Also, crock blockers, the bad fashion choice alert system from the Cornfield Enterprises. Crock blockers, hey man, don't wear those shoes. 
and the perfect snack while you're wearing Dukakis khakis and crock blockers, MacGuffin's Muffins. MacGuffin's Muffins, building strong plot points 12 ways. And for that special someone on their special day, say the anniversary or upcoming indictments of a certain number of people who are probably going to prison for a very long time unless they're pardoned by the man who has the greatest following of anyone in the, in the country, Triffitt's Flowers. Triffitt's Flowers, delivery is free, but you won't like it. All right. I do Hi, have something everybody. to say about Roseanne, if you don't mind. You want to start with Roseanne? Yeah, because I heard okay. the best response to to uh, uh, Roseanne, the view um, from I don't know who, but I'm going to steal it. Um, our view of Roseanne Barr is Virginia just became the 33rd state to pass Medicaid expansion. That's right. And New Jersey, let's give let's give a hat tip to New Jersey. Mm-hmm. They decided to pass this week insurance mandate. Health insurance mandate yeah. will be in New Jersey. If you live in New Jersey or a taxpayer in New Jersey, you're required to have health insurance. And that is because they are well over 90% uh, insured and they didn't want to screw with that. Mm-hmm. So uh, the states are, you know, states' rights, right? I mean, Damn if right. that's where we're going to go, if if insanity reigns at the federal level, uh, Which we're going to have to take it on at the state level. And we also want to congratulate our home state of Illinois. Yes. Our, our view of Roseanne is also that the Illinois is now the 37th state to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Yep. So there you go. Important yes. things are happening. And... Uh, also, my view of Roseanne is um, sorrow that uh, over 4,000 people died in the hurricane yeah. in Puerto Rico and uh, that yeah, we government. are separating children from their parents who are asylum seekers at the border More because of Republicans. More yep. people died in Puerto Rico than in Katrina, yep. than in, at Pearl Harbor, yep. and then on 9-11. Mm-hmm. And the president of the United States does not give one tiny shit about it. Nope. At all. I remember when we used to hold hearings for years on end about four people who mm-hmm. died in a terrorist attack. Yeah. Uh, and, and if that hearing didn't yield the results, we'd hold another one and another one and another. Because Republicans, let's face it, like hiding behind dead Americans to snipe at liberals. Right. That's what right. they do. And they weaponize hearings for political purposes only. That is correct. There, there is one actually salient point to make about Roseanne. Which is, okay. I'm stealing this from uh, The Nation magazine, a headline mm-hmm. straight up. Roseanne tried to use Roseanne in quotes to prove that Trump voters aren't racist. There was just one problem. Yeah. <laughs> There's the problem. There's uh, the problem. It, it's it, Every time you turn around, there is um, overwhelming evidence. I mean, if this were an evidence table at a trial, it would have collapsed under the weight of all the evidence at mm-hmm. this point. Mm-hmm. That, that mm-hmm. Republican voters are just shitty, shitty people racist, mouth-breathing, fucking morons. They are. That's who they are. That's what they are. And it's kind of healthy, I think, that we we can now talk about that out in the open. Yep. That if you're a Republican, yep. you're a bad person. And you, you believe Republican, bad things. Well, and let's let's talk about this in light of Jennifer Rubin. I let's start say. with that. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I think there are a lot of Republicans out there like Jennifer Rubin. Uh, Jennifer Rubin we, is now part of uh, the cornfield <laughs> resistance. We have adopted her uh, finally uh, because of what she said last night on All In. Mm-hmm. And she said three little words, and they were not, I love drift glass. No, no. Or <laughs> but, I owe the cornfield resistance a lot of residuals for all of my right. columns for the last yes, two Yes, exactly, no. exactly. No. no, but she said, I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Mm-hmm. She said that in the context of believing, as she put it, you know, I believed that I tolerated uh, the amount of racism and bullying and nastiness within the Republican Party because I believed that it was a minuscule minority of the total Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think... uh, when you say that, and, and she has also made many comments to the effect of the only way that we are going to rein in Donald Trump is to elect Democrats to office. Yes. So she is not sugarcoating this or nope. making this in any way. Uh, we'll get back to, uh, cor- you know, let, let's let depend on true republicanism to take over and, and make this right. She's not, she's not under that illusion. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she said, I was wrong. 
Mm-hmm. And I wonder now, I guess she I guess she has a high enough platform and enough job security and is close enough to retirement age yeah. <laughs> and all of that yeah. that she can get away with now turning to into a Democrat. Well, um, turning essentially, into, I'm guessing she's an independent who will vote Democrat because yeah. you know, it, it just yeah, that, you that never want to go full Democrat, no, right? No. <laughs> but but that, that's a that's a really it's a really important point because mm-hmm. I have um have been in um, respectful but ultimately futile arguments with readers mm-hmm. um, on social media and in email that no, um, Joe Scarborough is not your friend. Mm-hmm. Joe Scarborough will knife you in the fucking back the minute the minute this turns around. The minute it's about tax cuts for billionaires right. and uh, grand bargain. He He's believes, back on the Republican bandwagon. He, and, Absolutely. And today, Bill Crystal ran his little ad for his Republicans for Law and Order. <laughs> and of course, Republicans for Law and Order, the, the his his tagline is some Trump defenders want to declare him innocent. The deep state guilty and the investigation to end. Some Trump opponents want to assume his wrongdoing. You know who's just sitting right in the middle being the reasonable In people? the middle, reasonable? Yeah, yeah Republicans yeah. for the rule of law. No, fuck you. The, the mm-hmm. people who still hold on to this delusion that there is a good Republican Party hiding out there in the weeds somewhere are the people who will, who will, who will stab you in the back the minute this turns around. Because right. they, they believe, they do not believe what we believe. They do not believe in Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid mm-hmm. or insurance or tuition or any of that shit. They just believe that they believed their entire career that they could create a monster and that that, that monster would stay in harness to them mm-hmm. forever. And that they created a, a team of mules, mutant mules, who would who they could drive anywhere they wanted to go. And the I, I forget who it was just last night on the Chris Hayes show, I think, who said, who worked on the uh, Hillary campaign. Mm-hmm. Was, oh, no, Jess McIntosh. Jess McIntosh, who, who went all the way back. This And this was a lovely thing. She went all the way back to Newt Gingrich. That's right. Yep. That they, they created an army of trolls and they fed them and they fed them and they got so big and strong they couldn't control them and the mm-hmm. trolls took over. And that in a nutshell. And they had her and Sam Stein on together. And um, who were just absolutely right on the money. This I couldn't have scripted it better. They got everything right. That you know, they gave them three minutes at the very, very end of the show, because what they were saying was essentially ignore everything you've seen on this network all day long, because none mm-hmm. of it means shit. Because every Republican who comes on here is going to sit here and look you in the eye and tell you that it all started two years ago. It wasn't me. Wasn't my good friend Rick Wilson. Wasn't my pal David Frum. We had nothing to do with this shit. It was all just a big fucking misunderstanding. Crazy people took over. All our back was turned. We were at the we were at the catering table, having a sandwich, having a drink. Turned around, boom! Republican Party was stolen. Yep. All of that is a lie. Mm-hmm. And anyone who who is anyone who integrates that lie into their explanation for what's happening around them cannot be trusted mm-hmm. because they will turn on you and rip your throat out the minute they're done with you because they drew, they believe. That, that there is a reasonable Republican Party just waiting in the wings to sweep in and take over. And until that happens, they will they will sound like liberals. They'll rip you and me off, Blue Gal. They will steal the critique of their own party right out from underneath us, and they'll make a damn good living doing it. And they will lie and lie and lie about the history of their own party, how they got to be where they are, because that trail leads to a whole bunch of evidence that has their fingerprints and and hair follicles and other bodily fluids mm-hmm. are all over it. Yep. And that is a conversation that they that that the Beltway will not allow to happen. No matter how bad things get, there's never going to be an open conversation about the history of the Republican Party. Yep. Yep. And guess guess who uh, quoted Rush Limbaugh on the Twitter this morning? Oh, I don't know. Donald Trump. Oh, bless his heart. The FBI was so concerned. And if they weren't, weren't targeting Trump, they should have told Trump they did tell Trump. Mm-hmm. They did. They did. They told him that Russians were trying to interfere with the election. They told the campaign that. They told him that. And he did not shut the door or call the FBI at any time when the Russians were clearly, I mean, standing backstage at the Republican National Convention. Mm-hmm. The, the ambassador was there. <laughs> 
I don't know how else you, no. I don't know what you do, you know. Well, and then I, I, I do want to do a shout out uh-huh. to uh, Representative Eric Swalwell, yeah, one of our personal heroes, who, by the way, if you go over to his Twitter and look at his uh, icon or his his profile picture, he's got his son on his lap, and it's such a mini me. It's hilarious. <laughs> Just like, oh, mini Eric Swalwell sitting there ready to run for Congress, too. Uh, anyway. He wanted he wanted all of us to know that the at real Donald Trump pardon hotline is open for your call. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Trump Russia witness, just keep quiet to the feds and there's plenty of ink for yours. Yeah. OK. <laughs> well, there's a, and, and, and in the universe of people who are are n- only now, only now uh, sort of coming to terms with the fact they might have been horribly wrong mm-hmm. is the former president of the United States, Barack Obama. Yeah, and this is a book that has come out by a former uh, senior Obama administration uh-huh. staffer. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name of it or the name of the uh, person. Rhodes, wrote I think it. his name. Rhodes, Ben Rhodes. Ben thank Rhodes. you. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking about that, that meeting that Donald Trump had in the Oval Office uh-huh. the day after the election, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where he, he, I guess he wanted to bond with Obama. And so he said, Hey, it's great. You and I could get the crowds and Hillary couldn't. Right. He's, yeah. He's just so. Well, and, and this is this. I, I do want to read this book when it comes out. The excerpts are a little. Yeah. I'm not sure what they are, but it, it really does kind of recapitulate all the stuff that we the the main critique we had of Barack Obama was that he was way, way, way too invested in in pandering to David Brooks. Yeah, and bipartisanship. And, and yep. pretending, yep. in pretending that you know, the, the pretending that there was a decent Republican Party out there. Mm-hmm. And by the end mm-hmm. of his term, when it turned out, Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell was the asshole was who was not going to let him publish a bipartisan statement about the election about uh, election fraud. It was Mitch McConnell's a fucking traitor. Mm-hmm. And and, and mm-hmm. by that time, Barack Obama wasn't surprised. He was like, well, what do you expect? It's Mitch, Mitch McConnell. He's opposed us all, the, all this way. He stole the Supreme Court seat. So, fuck it. Of course he's going to uh, do this. Of course he's going to politicize this. Because Mitch McConnell is, let me repeat, a traitor. His wife is a traitor. And they deserve the fate of traitors. They should spend the rest of their lives at Gitmo making license plates for you and me. But by the end of his term, Barack Obama had finally figured out that there was no partner for peace for him across the table. And he, he really, at, and, and as Trump won, as the results were coming in, he, he asked himself, what if I was wrong? You were. You were absolutely wrong. These people are not going to give up. They're not going to be your friend. They're going to follow any racist who comes along and tells them that their lies are, are patriotism and their paranoia is patriotic. They're going to do that until they're stopped from doing that. And being friendly with them and reaching out to them and offering to compromise with them and doing all the things that your good beltway liberal heart and that David Brooks taught you should be the right way to be a president in these perilous times will fuck you up because you're not dealing with people who respond to if 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 their party rips children out of the arms of their mother. And their party st- and the, the leader yep. of this fascist mm-hmm. party still enjoys an enormous amount of popularity. Among- what sort of people think that's a good thing? Yep. Reasonable Republicans. Where's the real obscenity Where's, here? Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So, uh, you know, that's that the pairing of that, the, the fact that Jennifer Rubin just said, look, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hoped and prayed. I thought I was willing to look the other way. I was willing to pretend. I was willing to countenance really awful shit on the assumption that this was just the fringe. No, this was the party. I mm-hmm. was the fringe. You were the fringe, Jennifer. All this time, you were the outsider. You were the yeah. person. And, and she's agreeing with that. Yeah, she, yeah, and that, she is. That's and, good and, for her. Yeah. And the, but the rest of them are all, right down the line, are people that the Republican Party, from Michael Steele to, to, mm-hmm. to David Brooks to Brett Stevens to Rick Wilson to David Trump, are all front men that the mm-hmm. racist party hired to act as their butler and their valet to be the respectable face of a, de, of a depraved party. Well, and you said last night when when she said all of this, you said, you know, we still have to have an accounting for all the stuff you did with the Iraq war. Yes, we do. You know, so Jennifer Rubin isn't completely off the hook yet. No, but there is a there uh, is a path to 
citizenship in the Democratic Party. There's a path to citizenship <laughs> in in our on our side in the cornfield resistance that if you say I was wrong mm -hmm. or liberals were right, that would be even better. Confession, <laughs> repentance, Confession. atonement. It's not yeah. that hard. And and the thing that I really struggle with myself are all the liberals who are uh, to borrow a phrase from Men in Black coming on like drunk prom dates. Yeah. You know, the yeah. first time a Republican says, you know, maybe uh, the party isn't all that great. Oh, you're my friend. Oh, come be with me. Yeah, yeah. You're my new bestest buddy. No, no, it, you, they're not. <laughs> they're really not. They're just looking for a way to extend their shelf life and to, to continue being paid to say things on television and in a newspaper in an environment that is utterly toxic to who they used to be. So they have to shift their story to liberals are idiots and conservatives are brilliant to conservatives are great. Liberals are assholes, except two years ago, conservatives were, were blindsided by this army of lunatics and led by racists who took over the shit and we had no control over. And mm -hmm. again, if, if mm -hmm. that's your story, then you cannot be trusted because you're still lying. You're still lying. And if you're at the core of your new creation myth is a lie is a big fat fucking lie that everyone knows is a lie that Jess McIntosh knows is a lie that Sam Stein knows is a lie that Chris Hayes knows is a lie that I know is a lie that you know is a lie. And if that's the core of your story, then you are lying for a reason. The reason Donald Trump lies every day of his life is a reason he's covering up his criminal enterprise and his treason. The mm -hmm. reason conservatives lie every day about the origin of the problem with their party is that they are fucking complicit in it and they yeah, don't want to admit face. it. Right. They want to say Anyway, face I'm off my soapbox and we're <laughs> on to bigger and better things. The next thing. The next thing. The next thing. Uh, do you want to, we have to talk about Dinesh D'Souza. I'm sorry. Oh, I please. know divorce to spousa is 10 grains word for him. Dinesh to felon, um, yeah. Yeah. Dinesh DeFallon is mm -hmm. another one. Mm -hmm. uh, and and as I put in my post at Crooks and Liars uh, today about this is it's really important, I believe, uh, to separate the trolling that Donald Trump is doing from the actual destroying of democracy that Donald Trump is doing. He's doing both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So when he pardons Dinesh D'Souza, when he pardon, pardons Joe Arpaio, yes, this is designed to make liberals mad. It's important to separate the trolling from the actual destruction of our legal processes. Right. And so when Donald Trump pardons Dinesh D'Souza and Sheriff Arpaio and all of those types, mm -hmm. and it makes liberals really mad because, yes, these are truly awful people who've done awful things. Scooter Libby. Uh, and Scooter Libby. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh it is in part designed to make liberals mad, it's, but more importantly, and the thing that we have to focus on is that this is a gross abuse of power. Yes. And he is signaling and direct messaging Michael Cohen and Manafort and anyone else who might testify against him that if they stay true, he will pardon them. And that is a different story and and should be kept i believe should be kept separate from the yeah. rage that we will all feel seeing a alt-right douchebag like dinesh d'souza mm -hmm. get pardoned yeah um and now that I, I wanted to ask you because now uh trump has dropped a hint that he might uh commute the sentence of blagojevich yeah any comment drift glass on that uh, well <laughs> yeah um as someone who's written i don't know couple of dozen posts about Rod Blagojevich. At least, at least um, yeah. it, it falls into the category generally, uh, the idea that somehow, you know, liberals and or Democrats and or Illinois Democrats would be thrilled if Rod yeah. Blagojevich were let out of jail. It falls into the same category of liberals are going to be real mad if Bill Maher gets canceled. No, we're no, not. No, no. But please <laughs> keep thinking that. Please keep believing yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Rod Blagojevich was a criminal. Mm -hmm. um, he was a disgrace. Uh, he was uh, he and you know we had the d unique distinction of having two governors in prison at the same time. At the same time, yeah. Yep. I don't hear anybody pardoning George Ryan retroactively. But let me just put it that way. <laughs> and the reason I think is, and, and someone else pointed this out, not me, is that um, Fitzgerald was the person who prosecuted Blagojevich. I heard that, yeah. yeah. And also, it Blagojevich was uh, on tape trying to sell Barack Obama's Senate seat. Yeah. To the highest bidder, basically. And uh, 
so there's that. There's the F you don't F you Barack Obama. And he was on The Apprentice, I think. Yes, he was on The Apprentice. So, you know, this is Celebrity all just, Apprentice. This is all just, you know, it is the only thing Donald Trump knows how to do is think like an asshole TV host That's mm-hmm. and steal from people and lie all the time. Um, but he's clearly uh, this plus um, uh, uh, the signaling that he might want to pardon, pardon Martha Stewart. Uh, I mm-hmm. read that very quickly. I thought he's going to pardon Rod Stewart. I had no idea that that was even a possible <laughs> thing. Then I slowed down. And, oh, okay. Rod Blagojevich. No, it's it's celebrity celebrity prosecutions. Yeah, you know the, that he's going to go over to people that his that his as you call them meat puppet yeah. followers will recognize, and he and he is reinforcing the belief that our laws are the worst in the world, right? And the people who were prosecuted by James Comey or friends of James Comey. Mm-hmm. Are the people mm-hmm. who are going to be pardoned? Celebrities, celebrities, right? And it's it, right. It's nothing. You know, this is it. It does have this weird feel of he's assembling his, you know, Suicide Squad. <laughs> his celebrity apprentice Suicide yeah. Squad. And just this you know, squad of goons and misfits who he's going to yeah. pardon out of jail and say, "Now you owe me. Now you bitches all owe me." And so you'll you know see Blagojevich out there. Selling Trump steaks or whatever it is, and and you know, D'Souza will be given God knows how many millions of dollars to make a series of really really shitty movies uh, yeah, about Shelby Democrats Adelson. feeding the Klan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and that's yeah. that's the thing. This is a a rampant systemic infection. Mm-hmm. There's not one mm-hmm. or two or three or four people that if you just got them out of the picture, if you just made sure they never held power again, the system mm-hmm. would correct itself. The entire conservative movement, the entire Republican Party is the problem. And it has to be – it is now a a, a completely um, toxic systemic infection that has to be cleaned out. And so it it doesn't really – the individual pieces of it are are interesting or or enraging or whatever. But the whole of it, the fact that you can have Dinesh D'Souza as a national national figure – Mm-hmm. Is insane. The fact that Roseanne Barr was ever given a television show, given her history, is insane. Yeah. The fact that these yeah. people are permitted to walk around unattended by mental health experts, um, <laughs> but there's just too much money in yeah. letting them run wild, um, letting them do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, as long as there's an audience, mm-hmm. a television audience for this, that's it. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dirk, Lass, I will say one thing in Rod Blagojevich's favor, yeah. which is he has served actual time in actual yes, prisons so far. Yes, he has. Uh, unlike Dinesh D'Souza, who served, you know, six months at a Motel 6, basically. And uh, it was a detention center, not a prison. My theory was so. that Trump was going to pardon Charles Manson. And that because uh, he has such, you know, he has is I like the man. There's a celebrity. I, yeah, he's he a like, celebrity. The way he, the, he's got great ideas about race. The way he thinks about race <laughs> is just awesome. Isn't he dead? And then someone told him he was dead. And then Trump said, "Are you sure?" <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Is, isn't he like that Russian that Russian reporter guy yeah. who's not really dead, but he's dead? No, he's really, really dead. Oh shit! What do I do now? What about D'Souza? What he's doing? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what's happening in Grandpa Crazy Brains. Uh, the little hamster wheel is going around and around his head, ever slower and ever nuttier. Um, you know, today is the day when Donald Trump said that he never said nothing about no Russian connection with Comey, right? Except for the shit that you said on television in front of twenty 20- on television. Yes. You know? <laughs> and even Brett Hume remembered. Yeah, like uh, he used the liberal superpower. I know. I don't mean to go all drift glass on you here, uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, but uh, yeah, it's, and it's it, that's the thing. It's it's so it it is now. There's there's no subtlety here. Yeah. Again, this is this is a crazy racist asshole playing all of his cards up. Rudy Giuliani's out there saying, "Yes, of course, I'm poisoning public opinion because they're going to try to impeach him, and we have to stop that." Right. No, that's exactly and, what he said, and I did love what Michelle Goldberg said, which is, "Why are we Why are we continually moving the goalposts on impeachment?" It yeah, is so clear that this man needs to be removed from office yeah. swiftly. And yeah. it's only the Republicans in Congress and the Democrats who are making a, whether it's a wise calculation or not, a calculation that to impeach him will make him stronger because you won't get a trial out of the Senate. And mm-hmm. so therefore he will get the sympathy. And when, when the Senate trial goes his way, he will be vindicated. And mm-hmm. so 
yeah, you, unfortunately, you have to make those kind of calculations. Is this going to make him stronger to yeah. do a failed impeachment as opposed to voting him out of office? Um, I, I, I'm not in that position, but I, I do understand that calculation. I don't like it, but I understand it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Jeff Sessions for a minute, Drift Glass. Well, and if any, if anyone out there has 67 votes in the Senate yeah. that you've been keeping from the rest of us, yeah. please let us know because we'd love to have 67 votes in the Senate mm -hmm. because that's what it will take to impeach and remove uh, these assholes from office. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, then you're just blowing smoke. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there is, and, and the impeachment thing um, really is largely an invention of a bunch of people who talk to each other on, on cable news, yeah. Yeah. not the need for it or the, or the absolute mandate or the, the desperate desire to get rid of someone who's killing this country. who's just wrecking everything he touches on purpose mm -hmm. to the glee of the mob that elected him. But the, the fact that no, all this hue and cry about if Democrats run an impeachment, what, what does that mean? You talk to any candidate out there, they're not talking about this at all. They're talking about health care. They're talking about immigration. They're talking about wages. They're talking about all the things Democrats talk about. Mm -hmm. The only people who are freaked out that Democrats might overreach and it'll be a blowback. It'll be a thing. Or that they don't have a message, are, which is hilarious. Yeah. And is Chuck Todd. Yeah. And he's he is trying to scrape together a story out of little bits and pieces that are on the cutting room floor rather than talk about the real story. Well, and I've I've said this before and I'm going to say it again right now. Yep. Women are invisible to Chuck Todd. That's right. Women activists are invisible to the Beltway. Thank God. We're that toe current, right? No, Watch for the current that's going to drag you on. It's going to drag the Republican Party under and it may be under the surface, but it's going to get you. You're the uh, seen an alien. Or aliens. <laughs> they're inside the walls, man. I don't know. They're, I swear they're inside the room. And they don't see you coming because yeah, yeah. it is impossible that women, you know, who are, let's face it, three-fifths of a citizen as far as Chuck Todd is concerned, yeah, yeah. Um, can mount any kind of series, anything. And all the evidence is to the contrary. So yeah, it is yeah. funny to watch people who, who have no idea. Uh, this, again, is Prince Prospero's ca uh, castle in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, a cask of Amontillado. They've right, walled right. themselves off from the rest of us. They're partying and reveling and, and, and only interested in what they're interested in. They have no idea what the rest of the country is going through or what the rest of us think. And when the wall comes down, they're going to be utterly surprised because nothing in the fairy tales that they tell themselves has prepared them for what's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they don't know how to make sense of it. So they just keep, they hunker down deeper and tell each other both sides. Yep. More fairy tales. So let's talk about Jeff Sessions. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I have a feeling Jeff Sessions uh, is holding some cards against Trump and Trump can wail and and gnash his teeth about it, but can't fire him because he knows Sessions will either flip or be yeah. forced to flip in some way. Uh, and Sessions clearly loves uh, discriminating against immigrants so he darn does. much that any level of insult is fine with him as long as he gets to keep doing that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there anything else we need to add? No, he's, he, I mean, uh, Trump is playing war, which is the dumbest card game you can play. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Jeff Sessions is playing old maid. And they, <laughs> they're just, yeah. they, they have, they, they have an under, they have a mutual loathing of each other. Yeah. But yeah. Je Jeff Sessions understands very much like, like uh, Mike Pence does that if he just makes himself a, a sniveling craven enough footstool for this lunatic tyrant, he'll get to keep his job. Mm -hmm. And there is some deal that's been worked out behind closed doors and, and, and who knows where else that you can infer that basically the Senate is saying, no, 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 this is this is the trigger. Um, yeah. I don't think it really is, though. I really do think the Republican Party is so hollowed out and sold out and they've capitulated so far that Trump's troops are already in Poland. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's no mm -hmm. stopping them now. I mean, you can put up a you can put up a fight if you want, but. They have already given up so much territory and so much credibility and so much that now we're having the, the Trey Gowdy hour. Yeah. Let's segue right into that. There's this, yeah. you called it the Trey Gowdy rehab project. Yeah. Right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Right in front of us. Trey Gowdy has no business being anywhere near power. Trey Gowdy is, is the Javert of the Benghazi farce mm -hmm. right. who, who cloaked himself in righteous anger and love of, of the judicial system and the law to persecute 
to dr- deliberately persecute Hillary Clinton to drive her numbers down. He does not give a shit about the people who died. He does not give a shit about the process. He only cared about ripping her apart as much as he possibly could. And everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. That's exactly why he was put in that position. And he humiliated himself. And she sat in front of him for 11 hours and, pardon my, pardon my language, waved her dick in his face. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just made, made his, his, his whole trial look like the farce that it was. And the, and the idea that now, at the 11th hour, as he's leaving the body that he now decides is too mean for him because mm-hmm. he's going to lose. He suddenly has a, a minor come to Jesus moment. Says, "Well, there really wasn't a spy in there. It was more of an informant. That's what the FBI does." Mm-hmm. Oh my God, Trey Gowdy, you've redeemed yourself. Please come back to the Beltway. Please come back to the table. There'll be a seat for you on Morning Joe from now until the end of time. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. Trey Gowdy is is who he always was, and the fact that he did one thing that wasn't completely heinous and awful as he's walking out the door because he wants to be a goddamn judge. Right. Right. Um, is is but that's the game it's 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 gingrich rules it's no matter how shitty you behave you're part of the club so if you can just give us something something quotable we will have you back on television we will rehabilitate your reputation we'll get you into a nice set of robes and you'll be set for life and yep. that's that's the game and that's the game as as it exists in a walled city full of depraved revelers who don't understand anything that's going on in the rest of the country. They think that that's great, that he has, that he has come down off the cross, that he has redeemed himself, that, that all is well. And all, from the outside, we're like, are you shitting? Who are you fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? The, the right hates him. The minute he opened his mouth, said anything that wasn't the party line, they called him a rhino and, and kicked him to the curb. And we on the left are done with shit like this. We're done. So the only people, Beltway people are talking to is each other. And they get to do that because they own the cameras and they own the microphones and they own the newspapers and the rest of us can go pound sand. Well, come November, here come the ladies. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd like, if you'd like, I'd like you to talk about Legion. Legion. What do you want yeah. me to say about Legion except well, just, it's a good show? <laughs> just your impressions of it. I mean, that's you know, I'm I'm sort of the science fiction nerd. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, I I'll tell you what I think. I like um, I like the characters in it. Yes. That's really it. It really is. And it, they can hold this show in the hallway. This is the power of it. Uh-huh. So much of the show takes place in a hallway where there are no windows and it's just like a bend in the hallway and you still care so much about what's happening Mm -hmm. and it's a science fiction show. And so you're supposed to, to have whiz bang science fiction and people can travel and through other people's minds and people are raised from the dead and put in other people's bodies. Their conscience consciousnesses are transported all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's part of the X-Men universe. Is that right? Yeah. Sort of tan- tangentially. But David's father is huh? supposed to be Dr. Xavier. Okay. The main character in Legion, his father is Dr. Xavier. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you you have this show that a lot of it just takes place in a hallway or a room with a desk. Mm-hmm. And yet you care so passionately about what's happening to these characters and whether they're going to... Uh, be able to triumph over the bad guys uh, because they're fully developed as humans. I want to say humans. It's yes. Yeah. They have special powers. Yeah. They have things that might go wrong. You know, there's the, the their strengths are also their weaknesses. And so um, David, you know, this is not a spoiler because if you haven't watched season one by now, it's, you know, that you, the, the spoiler alert has system has expired on that. Uh, but David spent the first 25 years of his life in and out of mental institutions in and out of, you know, taking psychotropic medicines, right? Mm-hmm. Really serious, psychotropic drugs. Medicine, serious drugs, lithium and so forth. Uh, because his powers made them think that he was psychotic. Uh, and he was in an institution. He was at Clockworks, the mental hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, not that 
any of that is necessarily real. <laughs> That's the amazing yeah. thing. I mean, you sort of, there's so much of this is sort of consciousness driven. You don't know what's real and what isn't. Uh, but at any rate, the fact that, that it's a weakness, but also then he is able to tap into all of his powers as a strength. Uh, the, the female lead is the same way. She's got tremendous uh, power, but at the same time, um, it hurts her, right? You know, it really hurts her to have this power. And you see that on and on with all these other characters and uh, how much it hurts to be gifted. Mm -hmm. And I think that <laughs> that rings so true in my life and a lot of other people's yes, lives. Indeed. Uh, so uh, I like it for that reason. Yeah. It, it's it, the thing that, and this all gets back to the writing, the quality of the writing. Mm -hmm. They really have, first of all, they cast it brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, everyone in the show is exactly where they should be doing what they should do. Mm -hmm. That's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds me a lot of Lost um, before Lost you know, ran off the rails in that it's deeply weird and you're never quite sure what's true and what's not. But the way I can tell that it is masterfully directed and masterfully um, written is that the the uh, when they're not in the hallway they're in very unusual locations they're they're quite distinctive and cool um and sometimes the show will run for half an hour or 15 minutes before the show opens yeah um, sometimes right. it's a giant long you know flashback within a flashback within a flashback sometimes you're entirely within someone's head but i never other than the first episode and maybe one or two along the way slightly i never lost track of where i was who they were and what the stakes were Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is remarkably hard to do when you're telling a story that involves r people raised from the dead and monks with no faces and monsters from the id. And um, is this the end of the world? Is this even existing at all? People who run drugs half the time, people who are um, having, who live in this weird universe where they have to be reminded all the time that, you know, loss of meaning is not normal. You should report that. Um, it's it's really kind of a miracle of of writing and acting that I never really lose my way, even though I have no idea where, where this What's is going. What's happening? Yes, yeah. yes, and, yes. And I, I always am just I kind of marvel at it. The flip side of that for me is Westworld, mm -hmm. which I don't care about. I don't care about it at all. I think it's it's like an interesting diorama of an and you interesting. Notice I've stopped watching it altogether. Yeah. <laughs> Because it, 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 it is, I, I can, I admire the craftsmanship that the box was assembled out of and the detail of all the pieces in the box, but I'm completely checked out of any caring about any of the characters or why they're there or what they're doing. And I can, I can tell you what the storyline is. That's not the problem. I, I just, they have, they have invested no amount of, of effort in making anyone that, on that show sympathetic or real. Um, who isn't, you know, an Android, Yep. <laughs> uh, completely, re literally replaceable. So you know, it's this, they're, they're both science fiction. Yeah. And one, and they are, they're two very, one is very cold and removed. And it's like the director tells all the actors less, mm -hmm. have less emotion, <laughs> be less aggressive, just stare at things, really long period of time of staring at shit and then slaughter a bunch of people. Um, and it, it just bloodshed after bloodshed after bloodshed, followed by long periods of silence, followed by, you know, speeches about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's Westworld. Um, and then on the other side, there's this really deeply human drama about people who are, as you said, gifted and in pain because of their gifts, who are trying very hard to save the world um, and are not quite sure what to do next because there's no manual for it, who are not quite sure who the good guys are because you're never sure. and who know only one thing that they, 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 they love each other and they care about each other and they want to protect each mm -hmm, other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, it's such a contrast between the two. Um, I really do wish they'd flip networks. I wish HBO <laughs> would, this should, the, the um, Legion should be the, the, the tent pole show on HBO mm. that will take over once Game of Thrones is gone. Ah, yeah. That would be um, great. That would be great. Yeah. Um, and I'm watching Patrick Melrose with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, you are. You're not watching yes, that, but uh, it's no. ep it's in episode three. I've seen the first three. There's a f it's a four part sh four part show. So the last part is this Saturday. Catch up with it if you can. 
Uh, mm -hmm. It is uh, Benedict Cumberbatch playing uh, a person who goes through an abusive childhood and becomes an addict. And it sounds like exactly the kind of thing that I would not want to watch. I right. don't like watching people shoot up. I don't like drug abuse drama. Uh, but Benedict Cumberbatch is so good in this and so <laughs> good at uh, moving from tragedy to comedy and back again. And, you know, so there'll be a scene where there's scenes where he's confronting uh, what happened to him as a child in ways that is just harrowing. And then there's a scene where he's trying to have tea in a hotel, you know, in a very fancy, posh British hotel, and the quaaludes kick in. <laughs> and, <laughs> and his face just, one side of his face just melts off, you know, and it's not CGI, it's him acting, and it is amazing uh, and funny. Uh, just, uh, they are capable of doing that in this script and with this direction. It's very, very good. And of course, they have Benedict Cumberbatch, so... That's that's easy on the eye, and uh, and everyone is saying you know he's going to win all the awards for this because it's just a remarkable show. Mm -hmm. All right, but I'm I'm peeking in on Peaky Blinders. Oh, and you are yeah, you like Peaky Blinders, so I do. Uh, I do. It, yeah. it might you know it might disappoint me as so much in my life. As we go. <laughs> is that is that is that uh, <laughs> Netflix? Is Peaky Blinders uh, Netflix? Yeah, Netflix? it's available on Netflix. Okay, um, right. it's it, I just. I, I because I thought, you know, I don't want to commit myself to a 9000 page novel at this point. I promised I would read uh, Jonah Goldberg's piece of trash uh, and compare <laughs> it to I, to? Uh, you. Uh, I, I was going to do a compare. I did a, a partial comparison of the table of contents with that and Ayn Rand's uh, capitalism, the unknown ideal, I think, because remember, not very long ago, mm -hmm. this book was going to be the. um agenda shaping breakthrough novel uh -huh. says david brooks yeah uh yeah. that's gonna shift the whole debate it's gonna shift yeah. the whole debate yeah and yeah. It, he wrote it and went on a bunch of talk shows uh where they said so tell us about your sh stupid fucking book and he did and no one has spoken of it since mm. uh it has fallen into that hole where all newt gingrich books go uh that eventually end up at the end of a long tunnel in the remainder dollar bin at my dollar store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I, but I, I haven't yet picked up the next book to which I'm going to commit um, weeks and weeks and weeks of my life. But I thought, <laughs> you know, television is, there's, there's a lot of television that's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I'd give this a try. And it's, it's, it's good. It's authentic and it's interesting and it's bloody. And it's, it, it's, there's a whole lot of Irish going on there. So uh, Charlie Pierce, if you're listening, and I know you are, um, dial it in. But that's, those are our TV recommendations. And the reason I put this in our notes today is I want to talk about something each and every week that has nothing to do with, Donald Trump. with the lunatic who's running <laughs> yeah, this country. Yeah, yeah. And give everybody a little bit of a break. Now, if you want to do half an hour on knitting next week, <laughs> no. I'm there. <laughs> no. I did want to applaud Netflix, though, because uh, Netflix has done a reboot, as everything is a reboot these days. But they've done a reboot mm -hmm. of the old show, One Day at a Time. Uh -huh. Do you remember that with Bonnie Franklin? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. And and they did a tweet um, yesterday that said, reminder, one day at a time is a sitcom about a tight-knit working class family <laughs> that tackles extremely topical <laughs> social issues in a smart and innovative way. You know, if you're suddenly looking for a show like that. That's very good. <laughs> and mom isn't a racist. Mom's not a racist. <laughs> mom's not a racist. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. thought in that same vein, I thought, the, the company that makes Ambien was very smart. Oh, they were too. Yes, they were. And I and kudos to the person who sent me the mashup of every time Mika Brzezinski says Ambien and the time she took Ambien and all the time she's had Ambien and vodka. And apparently it, I watched the whole mashup and she has made Ambien jokes about 30 times. Yeah, well, that's how she lives with, you know. Yeah, lives with her lifestyle. <laughs> lifestyle, I think, is the word you're looking for. That's she lives yeah. with it's like, yeah, yeah Joe, the Beatles yeah. are awesome. Yeah, whatever, man. Yeah. Bill Crystal's a genius. Yeah. Just too ambient. And, I, uh, I just think it's got to be hard getting up at three in the morning every morning. Oh, too. I'm, I'm and, sure it is. You know, just, I'm, to, and it's hard. getting up at three in the morning to do God's work is hard enough. Getting up at three in the morning to do the shit they do 
as to, is just to to be to be the blonde in the frat house yeah. that is Chip Morning Joe. Yeah, yeah. All right. What what are we at here? We're just all over the board, <laughs> gal. We're just right. We are. You, was we there are. any biblical uh, wisdom you want? I do want to impart a little bit of history, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, just uh, as a reminder that in 1511, Martin Luther was dispatched from uh, to Rome mm-hmm. from the Augustinian order that he was at, mm-hmm. and he thought Rome was going to be an awesome place. Oh yeah, he did, didn't he? And he was looking forward great. to it. <laughs> it's be great. And he, he walked up the stage. There's like apparently a staircase that Pilate stood on top of. And he, if you go up on your knees, you get a special dispensation. And he was there for a little bit of time. And, and it sunk into him the meaning of an Italian proverb that goes something like, if there is a hell, Rome is built over it. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a thing about walled, powerful cities. Yeah. Where all politics and all religion and in our case, all media are concentrated, yeah. is that it, it is such a deeply corrupting universe. It doesn't have to be. But it, when I, I mean, I, I used to read the news and watch the news and enjoy thinking I was seeing what the world was, was going on in the world. But man, 2004, 2003, when I really became radicalized because of the Iraq war, mm-hmm. uh, it really became clear how utterly utterly broken the referees were in our democracy the the media had become how absolutely willing they were to bend over and grab their ankles for republican power Mm -hmm. and never call out the monsters for being monsters and never call out rush limbaugh never even acknowledge he exists never call out newt gingrich and that there is something terribly terribly corrupting and therefore untrustworthy about the media as it exists now even even when you see it on Twitter, even when you see, you know, uh, Brian Selter on, on Twitter talking about you know, parsing the word lie. I just wonder yeah. what, what yeah. universe do you live in that this is an important thing to you? That splitting this particular atom into its subatomic lie atom, atom parts and talking about those to fucking death mm-hmm. is more important than, than taking a giant step outside of the walled city you live in and noticing that the entire Republican Party is an existential threat to this country. Mm-hmm. And then reporting on it. Yeah. And that's that's the thing that really has hit home with me is how um, bankrupt uh, the media is and how uh, however much we clean up the Republican Party, however much we clean up our politics, if the media is not really, really uh, taken down and rebuilt, uh, we're just going to be right back here again in two years or four years or six years because they really are a conduit for letting people get away with murder. And and the reason that that Bill Crystal still has a fucking job after all these years is because he's friends with these people. Yeah. And and that has to stop. I don't know how to do it, but I do know that unless we do it, we're just going to be stuck in this loop over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. And thank you for pointing out the whole story about Luther, because I th- one of the things that comforts me in all of this is knowing that history is long <laughs> and that all yeah, of this has happened before. This is not mm-hmm. the bottom of anything because this is simply human experience. And there are times when the dragon raises its ugly head and has to be wiped out. And it happened with Luther. It happened with Martin Luther King. It happened. Mm-hmm. It's happened throughout history. This kind of, battle i mean civil war on and on and on we've had this battle and we grow as a result of it and we will get through this and i i have to believe that because otherwise i'll give up i tweeted just to keep myself sort of chin up today Mm -hmm. this exchange between sherman and grant Hmm. um, after a major loss when Mm -hmm. sherman was going to go talk about retreat but he decided not to instead he walked over and said well grant we've had the devil's own day haven't we Mm -hmm. and grant said yep Lick him tomorrow, though. Yeah, yeah. It's it's that, no, we're not going to lose. Yeah. We're going to have setbacks. It's going to be awful. Mm-hmm. We're going to lose friends. We're going to lose friendships. Yeah. Um, but we're not going to lose the country. And we're going to beat these fuckers. Mm-hmm. And it's going to take a long time. And it's going to hurt like hell. And the wrong people will end up with power. And the right people will end up destitute. And I get that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, these people will be swept aside in something better will come up in their place. And you don't have to 
believe in God or believe in, in religion, no. but uh, Proverbs 11, verse 18 says, a wicked person earns deceptive wages, but the one who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. And so they were comforting themselves with those words back in the days when Proverbs was written of recognizing <laughs> that, yeah, evil sometimes appears to triumph, but we're going to keep fighting. So uh, that uh, and that's the perspective I'm coming from at this point is keep fighting. Uh, and Election Day 2018 is around the corner. It, Just I can't believe it's June 1st already. You know, we're we're zooming toward that. And that's not the end. You know, that's the beginning of the fight. So uh, I, I'm, I have a I'm yeah, I have a question. Do you think by uh, July 1st, federal prosecutors will have processed all one million <laughs> files from Michael Cohen? <laughs> uh, June 15th is their deadline. That is. So yeah. screw it. The the judge said you know i think i think we'll go with june 15th on this one yeah so uh, and and given the fact that they are putting together shredded materials which is why the fbi got a warrant in the first place was we believe they are shredding evidence mm -hmm. in the cohen offices was why they got a you know no knock raid <laughs> permission from the judge uh yeah, let's go there. Okay. I would have actually, if I were the judge, I would have given him until June 19th. Because that's Juneteenth. Juneteenth, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, you, you have until June Juneteenth. Juneteenth, yeah. To yeah. turn all, all the shit over, all of it. Vet it all, look at it all, hire as many lawyers you have to. And then everybody knows yeah. the slaves are freed. Yep. Hey, can I, can I do one more thing? Yeah. I, I have four quick stories of hope to share with our, our listeners. This is okay. a little post show thing. Number one, Republican Missouri Governor Eric Greitens has quit just yes. to spend more time with Paul Ryan's family, which is very <laughs> exciting. Number two, Re Republican Representative Ryan Costello of Pennsylvania will not seek reelection in November because, and I quote, all I do is answer questions about Donald Trump. Yeah. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the party, pal. Welcome to the party, pal. Number three, <laughs> Republican Representative Tom Garrett of Virginia announced that he's an alcoholic and will not seek reelection in November. Uh, but his former staffers say he's more of an asshole. He, they accused, <laughs> accused him and his wife of mistreating them and making them into their personal servants. And, Interesting. And right here in Illinois, right here in Illinois. I, I, first of all, I want I want to applaud anyone who is willing to admit they have an addiction problem yes. and seeking help and and taking the steps necessary to get over that. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, if your all of your employees are saying that you and your wife treat them like shit, uh -huh. your addiction problem does not excuse that behavior. And here in Illinois, here in Illinois, Sherry Bustos has been given a gift, an early Christmas gift. Uh, is she is she running against a Nazi? Uh, well, no, we do nominate Nazis here. That's true. But this is Bill Faywell. Okay. He's the Republican nominee for the U.S. House seat in Illinois 17. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, among other things, a 9-11 truther oh. who once claimed that Beyonce had ties to the Illuminati. Cool. Yeah. Uh, he won an uncontested primary because that's who these people are in March and saying that Jay-Z, quote, has a long history of serving up the godless of serving up the godless Illuminati and shared YouTube videos that claim Beyonce's halfway halftime performance. The Super Bowl used Illuminati symbolism. I hope that Illuminati comes up in the healthcare debate, too. I sure do hope so. I sure hope well, Carrie Bustos talks more about healthcare. You know, healthcare is really important to her district. I'm very familiar yeah. with Sherry Bustos. She lives in what is a, essentially a Republican district. She represents yep. a Republican district. Uh, and the way that she wins elections is to talk about jobs, healthcare, and making sure people have both. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason I know about her uh, is she represents the district that Augustana College is yes, in junior dude. and junior dude goes to augustana college he will be a sophomore mm -hmm. he is going out on dates strict glass i, I know. don't know what i'm gonna do about that I and know. let's celebrate our house starting this weekend is free of middle schoolers that's true that's true <laughs> as of to as of tomorrow as of tomorrow as of as of this weekend no more middle school i'm not raising middle schoolers anymore and i have to say those of you who have done it know where what I'm talking about. It's um, that hormonal thing of nuttiness is a, a thing to go through. You it's, it's like hell. You go through it. You get the other side of it. Like hell or Indiana, you just keep going through it until you're on the other side. 
We drove through a lot of places. Oh, by the way, here's what I discovered on our drive. Uh, that if you take, if you go on the Labor Day weekend or around the Labor Day weekend, or Memorial, I'm sorry, Day, Memorial weekend. Day weekend, yeah. my brain's at, um, I swear to God, every 30 miles, uh, there was a dead deer mm-hmm. or a, and or a cop pulling someone over. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it, I've never, I've been, I've driven long distances. We have never I've seen so many blue flashing lights on a highway as just the road from Springfield. And we went through three state capitals. We went through Springfield, Illinois. We went through Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus, Ohio to get to family and see family. So, Well, we, we touched four states there and four states back. Yeah, we, we stayed in Pennsylvania, far western Pennsylvania. Yeah, and, and Drift Quest did all the driving, and I did all of the cross-stitching and knitting. So thank you for doing all the driving, by the way. That's my job. Um, That's dad's job, yeah. But yeah. tomorrow yeah. is going to be a typical Drift Class Blue Gal day. If you wonder <laughs> what a day is like here, um, <laughs> my beautiful wife will be attending graduation ceremony for our middle schooler, and I will be at an immigration march. <laughs> So that's pretty much what we do here. We uh, we we have a family. Um, we we attend to our family business. We love them dearly. We try to raise them right, and we are politically active in our community and try to be good examples and at least good servants to our fellow citizens. And the drift class, the, drift class, the, the listeners that we hear from are doing much the same thing. Yes, and we're they are. very very proud of all of you for all that you're going to do and have done to get people the right people elected this fall. All right, we got to go. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Spartacus. Uh, Spartacus uh, got caught in the flash on this picture, and so (laughs) his eyes are glowing like a comic book character, uh, dazzling you with his magic eyes. Uh, Don't let that fool you. He is magic anyway. (laughs) Go see Spartacus at our Facebook page and website. You can send your Internet Kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. I want to thank... Uh, The few of you who put post-it notes on a check and said, (laughs) we love what you're doing. Keep up the good work. I I love that people heard me and realized uh, it's time to drop perfectionism and think I I need to have the time to write Drift Class and Blue Gal a long letter Mm -hmm. of my political opinions. And just get your check in, you know, five dollars will tell us that you love what we're doing. And and I am trying to abandon perfectionism and getting thank you notes out. So. Let's both work on that this week, and I appreciate it. And Drift Class appreciates it, too. I do. I speak for him often. She does. She's uh, a sound editor. So <laughs> whatever you hear on this, it's she approved it. <laughs> Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties know that Dinesh D'Souza can be pardoned, but he can never be forgiven. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying and the shooting and the dying and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2018, DGBG Productions Incorporated.